we have more blessings and more support from our royal fathers. And it is my pleasure, my honor, to welcome for his goodwill message, the Obi of Onicha, His Majesty, Igwe Nemeka Okochuku Achebe, for his goodwill message. Please, let's put our hands together for him. We have a lot of royal blessings this morning, so please, let's put our hands together as he comes to the podium for his goodwill message. Thank you. Your Excellency, our First Lady, the Mother of the Nation, um, Your Excellencies, our Governors, the Chairman of EFCC, our host, my Royal Brothers, Sultan Sukutu, and others who are present, <laughs> distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I just realized on arrival here that I have to uh, give a goodwill message, but I'm also uh, under the protection of the, uh, of the MCs because they said, speak for five minutes or even less. So I'll try and speak for even less than five minutes. But um, <clears throat> on a serious note, I'd like to congratulate the EFCC for um, setting up this summit. The objectives resonate very well, and I'll come back to that. But also express gratitude to the partners, EU and other partners of EFCC um, in mounting uh, this program. And it's very, very appropriate to do because cybercrime is now international. And I'll come back to that. Technology, particularly ICT, has made the world a much, much, much better place. I think we all agree on that. But because also ICT um, because it provides the information superhighway, it also creates opportunity for the socially deviant people to exploit it for crime, which is why we're here today. ICT crime, um, cyber crime, which is an international business in every manner because information and technology uh, information technology has also broken down physical barriers of countries so you can stay in Nigeria and commit a crime in China uh, through, the, uh, through the internet and so on. Therefore, cybercrime must be attacked at two levels. At the international level, through cooperation and participation, as we're here today with uh, EU and other organizations supporting Nigeria, and Nigeria supporting other countries in identifying their own criminals who are in Nigeria, as presented by, uh, uh, on the profile of uh, our chairman. But more importantly, at the national level also. And um, uh, the Sultan has spoken about the need for values reorientation. It, res it resonates very well with me and my own community. At the national level, values reorientation is very, very important. And I'll come back to a little effort to make it in my own community. The family level, our religious institutions, our traditional institutions, our schools, everywhere the message of restoring our core values, hard work, honesty, belief in God, and all of it must come together. Without restoring our values that have been distorted. Everything we do will not be sustainable. And then, of course, we have to e uh, expand the economic opportunities for our youth. There are youths who are educated, they've gone to school, but don't have relevant jobs and so on. They get frustrated. I think uh, the chairman referred to that in his address. We must create or broaden the economic base to 
generate opportunities for our youth who are very, very vibrant, very active. If you go anywhere else in the world, in America, Britain, Europe, everywhere, our Nigerian youth are leading, and leading very, very well. We just had a Nigerian young lady met the head of a college in Oxford University. Okay, so we've got to create opportunities here for them also. Very, very important. And um, talking about creating opportunities and values orientation, I'd like to share briefly our own little community effort in Onicha. Five years ago, we set up what we call the Onicha Advancement Foundation. It is registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission, which means uh, we have to give full accountability of our actions. We've got leadership training, we've got basic entrepreneurship training, but also have ICT training. And our ICT training program has produced a few of our young people, boys and girls, who are earning very good salaries everywhere else, and so on and so forth. And this is our own little effort at the community level because we believe that sustainability will also ultimately um, grow at the foundation level, at the community level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'd like to invite you, uh, uh, Chairman of F uh, EFCC, to come or to send your people to see what we're doing and see how you can collaborate with us to grow uh, wealth at a local level and uh, grow up our children and so on. On that note, um, the, uh, the statement by the uh, Honorable Minister for Youth uh, resonates very well with me and with my people. And I'd like to have a chat with you on that. Because there's nothing we do in Onisha today that does not involve our youth. It is their time. And we've got to recognize that they have abilities. Sometimes when you say youth, people think of, oh, 20 years from now you can take over, etc., etc. In every aspect of our life, in my own cabinet of chiefs, I've got several young ones there, and they are among the best you know, in terms of the ideas they can generate and the effort they can put in. So uh, without taking more time, and I hope I haven't spoken for more than five minutes, again, I'd like to congratulate uh, the EFCC for this program. I'd like to congratulate the, uh, the chairman for his leadership. And uh, we met uh, informally at uh, a co-signature hotel, and since then he has stayed in touch with me and I've stayed in touch with him. And I'd like to congratulate uh, all the partners who have supported the program today. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.